Hey guys, so today I want to talk about a Python script I wrote, but first off I want to talk about an operating system called DiaPy. It's a great option, it's a great build and a great setup for single board computers. They have images available for many different models. Now I did notice they didn't have a image for the LTS or Sopine or the Pinadio uh, project gateway. So I took it upon myself to convert an Armbian image over to a Diapi image. So that's available for anyone who's interested. I'll leave a link in the description to, for the direct download and I'll also write up a small blog post. So both of those will be in the description of this video and I wanted to talk about some of the great benefits of Diapi, what makes it unique and I also want to talk about something you can do with your home security system. So I'm going to quickly go over the home security script I wrote. It is basically a Python script that goes along with MotionEye, which DietPy offers. So if you have a camera, a single board computer, and you want to install MotionEye, it's quickly and easy to do so using DietPy. All you have to do is go over to... First, you want to give yourself the per privileges to do so, then run DiaPi software, and you'll have quite a selection of software to choose from. I'm going to go over the process real quick for setting up a uh, camera software where the motion detection, when someone triggers the motion detection, what it's going to do is it's actually going to use a microcontroller, which is this ESP32 which is going to be sniffing for MAC addresses via Wi-Fi. So if a phone in the area has Wi-Fi on, their MAC address will be picked up. It will leave me a log file that shows all of the different devices in order of their signal strength. So that basically vaguely estimates the distance from my camera. So when these people or whatever possible burglars are walking by my motion detection and then I'm able to see all the devices in the order of the signal strength. Strongest signal is up at the top and going down to the weakest signal on Wi-Fi. And of course this is just an estimate. You would need a couple different microcontrollers in a couple different locations to do something called trilateration in order to get a really accurate read on distance. But this is a good estimate. So the first thing is We'll want to talk about DiaPi while we do this. Go ahead down through the DiaPi software and we can browse software and install something called MotionEye. As you can see, there's a ton of options on DiaPi, so that's one of the great benefits. Has a ton of different optimized software options for you. So you can install all kinds of different pieces of software, including Gidea, as I had mentioned with my Gidea Onion script that I wrote for you guys. Um, that allows you to convert it over to a Tor hidden service where there is end-to-end -end encryption between the Tor clients. There's also six randomly chosen hops in between. And of course there's a variety of other software here as you can tell. Tons of software on DiaPi. So if you have a device and you want to try that image, you're welcome to. So you would just select Motion Eye here then you would hit OK, then you would go down to install, it would do the rest for you. So it's as easy as that, it's very simple to do. We're going to exit here because I'm not going to install MotionEye on. This is the gateway and I don't need MotionEye on that. But that's how easy that would be. You can then set up your camera right in there. I will show you mine. I have it turned off right now so you're not going to see the actual image, but it would be right here. and at that point we can go through the configuration and we can have it set to execute this Python script. Of course first we're gonna need to take our ESP32 we're gonna need to open up Arduino and we're gonna need to upload compile the code for the actual sniffer first. So I've forked this sniffer here and we're gonna be using that and at that point we would then just copy this we would paste it right into Arduino then we would hit the compile button we would hit the upload button and we would then hook up our ESP32 using the micro USB here 
right to our Arduino machine. We would hit the upload for that compiled code of that sniffer. We would take this here, the Mac Troll Python script, and then we would take that and we would place that at, for my case, I put it in the etc slash motion i directory. But you can choose to put it wherever you like, mark it executable, and then go down to the motion notifications. We're taking, we're taking advantage of the motion notifications action. And with motion i, it's a, an awesome setup because it allows you to change all kinds of settings from the type of video down to the littlest details on the balance and the color effects and also the ways and the sensitivities. It can also learn sensitivity for motion detection so it's got smart motion detection as an option. There's a ton of great features on it. You can check that resolution so you could save space. You can put a lower resolution if you want to have more video fit on a smaller SD card. And Basically, to get the Python script working along with our ESP32, of course, that ESP32 at that point is then hooked up to that single board computer with the camera and the motion eye set up. And after that, after you have that set up, then you just go down to the motion notifications, have it run a command, select on for that, and then have it do kill all and then the name of this Python script and why do we do that in case there's a couple close together motion detection triggers you're gonna wanna make sure that you end the one that's currently running before starting a new one so that's just like a little fail safe I added as into the command and then after that you put the colon there and have it run the Mac troll script and what does the Mac troll script? Let's take a little closer look at the Python script I wrote called Mac troll. And what it does is it basically uses serial here and it connects over into our ESP32 so it can then transfer the sniffing from there into our single board computer with the camera. And at that point it will then filter out the different sections of the Mac addresses and also that Mac addresses signal strength. So then that it can then um, basically add it into a uh, organized little list where it also adds the date. So you have the timestamps. So because you have this list of the actual MAC address lists right here, as this is what it will look like in the log. And um, as mentioned, it's all in order of signal strength to help estimate the distance away. So if you have you know multiple individuals um, on your private property, you'll be able to better identify which is which. Now, that's basically it for that. That's how you would set that up. You know, if you have more questions on that, you can leave a comment on that, and um, I'll try and answer your questions. Uh, so, outside that, like, for privacy concerns, if you have, you know, privacy concerns, this is kind of like something to demonstrate how having Wi-Fi on and your MAC address being scooped up that easily. These are the kinds of things used in department stores and all different types of places. So it's good to know about these things even if you don't set one of these up yourself. Um, this is something that's out there and there are a lot more advanced things out there than this. So if you're concerned about your privacy, you don't want the stores who happen to send advertisements to your app when they notice what aisle you're in at a store and seeing what section you're looking at and then you'll get a bunch of junk mail. This is actually happening um, using different systems that are in department stores right now. So if you want to protect your privacy, I did write um, YPRI here, which actually can help you know spoof the signal strength, the host name, and the MAC address uses various different options. I've gone over it in previous videos, but I want to include a mention of it here just because I know a lot of people, sometimes they get upset when I talk about some of the surveillance stuff. But, you know, everybody needs home security, and maybe not everybody cares about home security, but this is a defensive measure. So if you were running YPRI, it has options to mimic different types of Android and Apple phones. It has continuously changing randomized MAC addresses at continuously changing times and changing addresses as an option. Or you can just set a single one. It also does MAC checks, so 
what happens is is if your firmware were to crash generally say you were using something like mac changer if the firmware were to crash it would basically reset to your original permanent mac address but that's that's not the case here um i wrote these mac check functions in so to make sure you have the right mac address the one that has been chosen by wifi so and always uses valid mac addresses unlike other you know mac randomization options out there um, which sometimes give away that you're spoofing the mac address by using invalid mac addresses and a lot of systems actually I've read some of the documentation on tracking and a lot of systems actually completely negate all MAC addresses that are not using valid OUIs, which is the three sections in the beginning of the MAC address. It basically identifies the brand name. So that's, that is a defense for you. And back to Diapi, it's a really awesome operating system. Setup really can help speed up a lot of your work. Another thing, it's super lightweight, so you only install what you need, and that's something I really like about it. Usually, generally, when I first booted, it's only using about 60 megabytes of memory so far, so that is a really nice feature for it. I also added uh, 2,000 megabytes as a swap partition, so if you check out the image I created, you'll have a 2,000 megabyte swap partition as well. That's basically what I have today, guys. I've been out of town. I've been on vacation for a week, so I haven't been able to do video. But I will be doing a lot more videos now, and I will have more updates and more tutorials. So if you need help with the Python script I wrote, leave a comment. You can leave questions in the comments. Make sure to share, like, and subscribe, and I'll be back later with more on how to protect your privacy in Linux.